Welcome back, beloved. Today's video is titled, The Satanic Temple Opens the World's First Religious Abortion Clinic. So very dramatic video today. This is like breaking news. I'm going to break down a Fox article for you. Um, I've made videos in the past on the Satanic Temple. You can search on my channel, Satanic Temple, and they should pop up. Um, they are a growing, you know, false religious institution. They're actually growing pretty ra uh, rapidly. I'm going to go over and review uh, kind of some of their growth today and how big they are. And uh, just a few things to give you some background. Then I'm going to go over this new abortion clinic that they're they're opening. However, I really want to get into their abortion ritual. It is extremely dark, and I want to expose it from Scripture. Now, the Satanic Temple claims they don't believe in any deity. They only believe in science. But it is amazing how they do exactly uh, what the, they, they, their personality is mirrored to the scriptural definition of the devil. Um, and that's exactly what the devil wants. He wants to convince the world that he's just a big joke, that he's not real, when in re because he's the father of lies, right? And when in reality, he is a very real enemy. He is a very real deceiver. And so... I'm excited to just kind of make this video and expose it. And at the end of it, I'm going to have a very long gospel presentation. And my goal with that is to hopefully this video one day will make it into the arms of someone who is about to get an abortion or who is extremely pro-abortion or thinks falsely they're a Christian, but also happens to be pro-abortion. And this will bring them to true repentance and belief in Jesus Christ. And so I would ask that you pray for that as well. I want to start off with just a few verses. When it comes to abortion, the Bible is just so abundantly clear. Obviously, it's murder. And, and I want to be clear, Christians are not debating if abortion is a sin. Okay, non-Christians debate that. Christians know abortion is murder. Okay, uh, Galatians 1 says, When God, who has set me apart even from my mother's womb, called me through his grace, was pleased. Paul was called and set apart even from his mother's womb. The prophet Jeremiah, the exact same thing. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you as a prophet to the nations. Our Lord Jesus himself, God in human flesh, there's a prophecy about him in Isaiah 49. The Lord called me from the womb, from the body of my mother, he named me. That was written 700 years before Jesus was born. Luke chapter 1, talking of John the Baptist, it says he'll be great in the sight of the Lord. He was preparing the way of the Lord. He says, he'll, you know, he'll drink no wine or liquor. He'll be filled with the Holy Spirit while yet in his mother's womb. So scripture is clear. If you could be filled with the Holy Spirit in the womb, obviously uh, you are alive. You are a human being. John the Baptist then, it, it reveals that uh, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, when John was in the womb, the baby leaped for joy. So someone in the womb, because he, John the Baptist was full of the Holy Spirit, he wasn't just a person, but he had emotions. He was a real baby. He had joy in the womb. This is amazing, but it's so clear. Psalm 139, uh, K King David's writing, he says, My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance. He, he's our creator. God is our creator. God breathes life into every fetus, everyone, every heartbeat. And in your book were all written the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. God is sovereign. He creates life, and no one has the authority or right to take that away. And everyone will have to answer for that on Judgment Day. Now, going over the Satanic Temple, they are growing quick. Uh, if you go to their website, you go find a congregation. I was looking for a congregation near me to street preach in front of, but a lot of them don't have you know actual church buildings. Some of them do, uh, but there's dozens and dozens. You can scroll down this page. They're in pretty much every major city in America, if not most of them. Um, and so we're going to break down this article a little bit today. Uh, Fox News just put this out and a couple other uh, news websites uh, that the Satanic Temple is opening a clinic to provide religious abortion care. And they named it uh, Justice Samuel Alito's mother. It's a really scoffing, mocking thing they did there. I'm going to break it down in a second. But it's called the Samuel Alito's Mom's Satanic Abortion Clinic. It is very crass and just, I mean, it's the perfect example of a biblical scoffer, what they did. I'll explain it in a minute. But the goal of this institution they just opened up, very scary because I'm, I'll, I'll, you'll see. So it, it, the goal of them is to provide 
free religious medication abortion, and they're going to name the facility what I told you, and it's in mockery of Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito, who authored the recent opinion overturning Roe versus Wade. He was like a decisive opinion. Their ultimate goal is to provide abortion pills to patients. I'm sure if it takes off and it makes money, they're going to want to do full-scale abortions, because this is what really scared me. This satanic temple Mexico facility, New Mexico facility, is operated by licensed medical staff. It just kind of blew my mind that a religious institution so depraved, so angry, so demonic, it has licensed medical staff working for it. It will make its services available to state residents who are 17 years old, up to 11 weeks pregnant, and medically eligible for an abortion. So your 17-year-old daughters, your 19-year-old daughters, uh, your adults, super sad, uh, the, the young women this institution will prey upon. And so basically, this is what they said. This is why we named it this. In 1950, Samuel Alito's mother did not have options. And look what happened. They basically just cursed him. I mean, biblically, that's a curse. That was from Malcolm Jari, a co-founder of the Satanic Temple. He's saying, if only Samuel Alito's mother had the option, look, they would have had an abortion and Samuel Alito would not have overturned Roe versus Wade. So they called it the Samuel Alito's mother abortion foundation. I mean, it's, it's grotesque. It's so, I mean, the Bible is just so clear. The wicked have been filled with hatred. You know, I'm making this video because I'm trying to show love to the wicked. I want them to be born again. I want them to receive everything I've received in Christ and the repentance and the salvation and the, the walk with him. Um, but you see how the wicked behave towards their enemies. They might as well have been saying here, go kill yourself. They're basically saying what you did was so wrong. <laughs> Woe to those that call evil good and good evil, right? What you did was so wrong, it would have been better if you were never born, is what they just said. Just super demonic, just the, the visceral hatred. And so this is what they put out. They announced it introducing TST, the Satanic Temple, Health. It is the world's first religious abortion clinic. And they have to go through a lot of hurdles and come up with a whole ritual as to why. We're going to break down the ritual today. It is deeply demonic. And it's there's really only one silver lining thing about this. There's only one good thing about this is it brings the truth to light. You know, it doesn't matter who's responsible for whether legal abortions or illegal abortions. Satan was always behind it. He's the father of all murders. So the only good thing about this is at least the lines are clearly drawn that when you go to get an abortion, you know, you're giving yourself over to the power of darkness. And so that that's the only thing. It makes the lines clear, as opposed to a lukewarm Christian that thinks you can be uh, pro-abortion and pro-Jesus. Jesus said, I'd rather have you hot or cold. Lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. And so I actually have more respect. I, I talk to people like this all the time. I, I genuinely have more respect for people like this uh, than for a Christian who wants to argue with me from the Bible why abortion is okay, right? Like it's easier, you know, at least the battle lines are drawn here. Uh, but they're claiming it's the world's first religious abortion clinic, uh, and they're going to be obtaining abortion medications at a discounted price. And so, uh, you know, th their aim is to expand that uh, to clinics in other states, and I'm sure they'll continue to do that. Um, they crowdfunded this. It's pretty amazing. The Satanic Temple Abortion Clinic Fundraiser. Um, it just reminded me of these Bible verses in Proverbs. The wages of the wicked are sin. Like God in his sovereignty Imagine people working hard, going to work, you know, imagine if you don't like your job, you're so bent on hatred and evil and murder and abortion, you then give your money to this fundraiser. And I pray to God you get saved. But do you understand on Judgment Day, not only are you going to have wasted your life and, and your hard-earned money towards abortion, but then you're going to experience none of those benefits. It's not like you get anything out of that. And then on Judgment Day, your hell is going to be a little hotter. I mean, the, the wages of the wicked is sin. It's it's sad. I'm making this video because I pity these people. I don't hate these people. It, I have pity on them. Not only is their whole life worthless, but on top of that, it's less than worthless. It's like when they get to hell, everything in their life is just going to lead towards it being hotter. And so this is what, it's just sad what they, what, the, what they want to do. They want to provide telehealth abortion services to patients in New Mexico and help those who need assistance. This is really scary. Assistance to travel to New Mexico when possible. So this organization is going to take young women across America, pay for them to travel there just so they can get an, an abortion, just so they can commit murder. This is really vile. I mean, do you want your teenage daughters in the care of the Church of Satan? I mean, they, they promote every ungodly thing you could imagine.
And as I said in my other videos, they have an after-school program, after-school Satan. I mean, this is what happens when you remove the Ten Commandments from school, when you push God out of school. You, you don't create a safe place for all religions. You create a vacuum that the devil just fills up instantly. It is sad. I mean, we're talking about just a few decades. And look at where we are with the LGBTQ movement. Look at where we are with the abortion movement. Where do you think we'll be 30, 40 years from now? I mean, it's, it's silliness. And so we're going to go over and we're going to break it down with scripture as well here in a second. This is their PDF from their website, the Satanic Temple's Abortion Ritual. We're not only going to break down what they write about it, which I think is really telling, then they have an official legal document you hand to a medical provider. We're going to break that down as well. This is dark. I mean, the stuff you're going to see, I'm going to play a video later too. The, the stuff you're going to see, this is as demonic as it gets. Um, you know, even the demons believe and tremble. The demons, they just, they will not submit to the lordship of Yahweh, to the lordship of Jesus Christ. And so with this, let's just break it down. Uh, what they do is they repeat the third and fifth tenet. And the third tenet I find really telling. So this is what they say as they're having this abortion, you're going to see later, they actually meditate and recite these tenets as they have the abortion. Now, not everyone has to do that, uh, but, the, well, excuse me, you have to do that to claim this ritual. However, they know not everyone's going to do that, but this is what they say. It's super dark. One's body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone. Remember that. Tenet five, belief should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. Uh, one should take care never to distort scientific facts to fit one's belief. And they do that. That's incredibly hypocritical. I'm not going to get into a scientific argument, but science is clear that a baby is alive. Okay. I, I actually agree. The Bible is incredibly scientific. It predicts hundreds of things about Christ before he was born. The nation of Israel was predicted before that. I mean, the, the Bible, uh, you know, however, I don't believe the Bible because science led me there. The, the wisdom of the world is foolishness to God, and God's wisdom is foolishness to the world. That's why it's called foolish ministries. And so, um, however, it's just super hypocritical because within their own beliefs, they lack all true science. However, moving on, personal affirmation. This is really dark. They chant this as they are taking the pill for the abortion or whatever they're doing. By my body, my blood, by my will, it is is done. Ooh, I think of when they crucified Jesus, like your blood be on us and upon our children. Um, personal affirmation by my body, my blood, by my will, it is done. Ooh, scary stuff. I mean, you should have chills and you shouldn't be angry. You should have pity on these people. Jesus said, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. That doesn't mean we're not accountable on judgment day. We are all accountable. We will pay account for every word we speak. However, they don't know what they're doing. They're blinded by their love of sin. They think they're free. The devil's told them you're free. They're slaves of their sin, totally blinded. And so I wanted to bring up some Bible verses so you understand how they're doing exactly what the devil wants them to do. John 8, Jesus looked right at his, his uh, the Pharisees at the time, and he says, you're of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. What, what, the, what the devil wants, you want. He was a murderer from the beginning. All those pro-murder are doing the desires of their father. They're uh, evidencing that they are not children of God. They need to be born again, literally, to, to receive that. Isaiah 14, you, have, you sort of get into the mindset of the devil and what caused his fall. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. It was pride and it was his own will. Look at this. I will ascend to heaven. That's what the devil was saying. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. He exalted himself. I will sit on the mount of the assembly in the recesses of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Look at this. This is so key. I will make myself like the most high. Do you understand? In the garden, when the devil brought us into this rebellion thousands of years ago, he said, eat this apple, eat the, or whatever the fruit was, you'll have the knowledge of good and evil. You'll be like God, like the Most High. He was lying to us. That's not true. We do not understand good and evil. God is good, and we are evil. Trust me on this one. His word is good, and anything against it is evil. And if you don't understand that, that's because you're evil. When I don't understand something in the word, and I disagree with it, it's because I'm evil. God is good. Jesus said, why do you call me good? And he wasn't claiming he wasn't God. He said, no one is good but God. 
Jesus is God in human flesh. There's no one good but God. And so the devil wants you to continue on in your sin, continue on in your pride, and he does that by affirming you that you're good when it's not true. And this is what the Lord says to the devil, and he says it to all non-believers in the end. Nevertheless, you will be brought down to Sheol, to hell, to the recesses of the pit. And so let's continue on. Continuing on with their ritual, the Satanic Temple's abortion ritual serves to cast off notions of guilt, shame, and mental discomfort. This is how non-believers look at the, the, the law of God. Psalm 2, they've cast off your cords, right? Cast off notions of guilt, shame, and mental discomfort. That is the law of God written in your heart. Your conscience makes you feel guilty when you've done something wrong. It's good. It's why you don't go out and like murder someone. You shouldn't murder someone who's alive, but you also shouldn't murder someone in your womb. Shame, mental discomfort, these are all afflictions of our sin. They're meant to guide us in life. We're not supposed to cast them off. That's how people start killing babies. And then it goes to killing old people with eugenics. Then it goes to killing alive people. It happens again and again and again throughout cycles of history. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, they make it clear. This is when you're choosing to have a medically safe abortion. We want you to cast off all guilt, all shame. Uh, e and then they say, even the most confident and unapologetic individual can experience uncomfortable feelings and anxiety. I mean, that's, that's what they want. Confident, unapologetic. They want you to just boisterously be prideful. The devil's sin was pride. And so, of course, you can have anxiety when choosing to terminate your pregnancy. And it's because of laws in many states that have imposed waiting periods and state-mandated counseling that can exacerbate these feelings as social condemnation and outright harassment. You're such a victim by those who oppose abortion. The rituals, which include the abortion itself, spans the entirety of the... Oh, hold on. I got off track there. Let me just scroll down. Okay. This ritual is designed to alleviate these stressors and empower. That's what they want to do. They want to empower you. It, it, many people use that word empowerment. I don't think you know what you mean. We don't want to empower anyone. We don't even need to empower me. God will empower me. If God wants me to preach the gospel, he'll do it. People don't have to empower me. That's not how it works, okay? This ritual, that, that just leads people to pride, okay? It's designed to alleviate these stressors and empower the patient to be guided by an appreciation of their bodily autonomy and knowledge of best scientific information about the, practice, the process. The purpose of the ritual isn't to persuade to have an abortion if they're undecided, rather assists in affirming their decision. That's exactly what the devil does. And in order to perform the ritual, we'll go over how they perform it in a little bit. You will need a quiet space, something that allows you to see yourself. They look at themselves in a mirror as they do this, and a copy of the Satanic Temple's third and fifth tenets and a personal affirmation. Dangerous word. So this is the actual legal document they use. And when we break it down, it actually describes how they perform this ritual and it gets even darker. So this is what you would hand. You would say, uh, you know, to an institution, you'd say, I'm a pregnant person and a Satanist beginning the process of an abortion ritual. I'm aware that state law, and that's the goal. They just want to get around state law, implements generally applicable restrictions on abortion. However, state law also provides for religious exemptions, yada, yada, yada. It goes on to say, as an adherence to the principles of the satanic temple, my sincerely held religious beliefs include blah, blah, blah. My body is my own, subject to my will, my will. You're going to see that a lot. Like hold up Isaiah 14 next to what you're about to see, and you're going to see I will, I my will. It's exactly how the devil fell. It's exactly the language the devil uses. My will alone, my body is subject to. I may make decisions. Uh, the religious or political beliefs of others fail to account for the science. It's accusing religion of suppressing them because they can't commit murder, right? My invi invi inviolable, I'm not the smartest man in the world, <laughs> right to bodily autonomy includes the right to make decisions about fetal or embryonic tissue. That's what, that's so heartless. This is what they call children. And brothers, sisters in Christ, I was the most heartless, wretched man you could ever imagine before I came to Christ. I, I would think and do horrible things. I've got nothing but pity for these people. But when I was born again, I came to repentance and belief. Like Christ died for wretched men like me. Christ died for some of these people. But if they don't repent, look at this. This is shameful. Fetal or embryonic tissue. That's all they're going to call it. I, I provided that the tissue is unable. So they're basically saying, I have the right over this tissue. As long as that tissue is unable to survive outside my body as an independent human being, I alone 
decide whether to remain pregnant and in sole discretion may disregard the current or future condition, <coughs> excuse me, I have a cold, of any fetal or embryonic tissue I carry. It is the language of Satan. And then this was just really telling, really important paragraph. These beliefs are put to practice in the Satanic Temple's abortion ritual. The purpose of the ritual is to free me from the cultural stigma surrounding this medical procedure by providing me spiritual sustenance, affirming my self-worth and asserting my bodily and spiritual autonomy from pseudo-scientific ideas propagated by others. That's a nice way of saying the law of God, the law of God written in my conscience, genuine Christians that are warning me that this is murder and I have to repent. That's what they're trying to do, free them from their conscience. Jesus said, he who commits sin is a slave of sin. If you do this, you're going further into slavery to sin. But if the sun sets you free, you'll be free indeed. When you're born again, you go from being a slave to sin to a slave to righteousness. And now the Lord and the Holy Spirit control your will instead of the devil and the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. This is exactly the faith of demons. They believe, but they don't care. They hate God. The abortion procedure is central to the ritual. Throughout this process, I will place myself in a meditative and contemplative state, deeply dark, and will focus my mind on diminishing my doubts and reinforcing my confidence, pride, in my ability to make decisions that affect my body. The sovereignty of God is the doctrine non-believers, and even some believers, reject more than anyone else. God is sovereign over every molecule in this universe. During the abortion, I will ceremoniously recite the third and fifth tenet. Can you imagine? I'm sure thousands of women have already done this or more will, especially if states do the right thing and make this illegal, then the satanic temple's ritual might become more common, which, like I said, the only good thing is that at least it clearly draws the line. You were always going to the devil to feel better about a murder, right? Now, at least it's just clear and out there. The culmination of this ceremonial rite is the abortive act. The abortive act. Upon completion, I will solemnly recite the affirmation. So dark. By my body, by my blood, by my will, it is done. Oh, I'm scared right now even making this podcast, even saying that. This is dark spiritual stuff. These are incantations. This is horribly dark. And I'm going to preach the gospel in a moment and share exactly how I would speak to someone I have on the streets and I would on the internet. This is the verses that this generation needs to hear. They need to hear the gospel. You need to know there's hope, there's forgiveness, but you also need to know the grave circumstances you are under. I'm going to play a video before I do that. It's easily the most demonic video I've ever seen. It is appropriate. There's nothing naked or, or cursing on it or, or anything where it's not appropriate, um, but it's scary. So I'm going to play that video now. The Satanic Temple advances many just causes that protect the religious rights of our members. We champion pluralism and have repeatedly taken legal action to assure that Satanists receive the same treatment as members of other faiths. Our ability to practice our beliefs has been aided by the enactment of the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. This law generally prohibits the government from interfering with a person's free exercise of religion, which includes the performance of religious rituals. The Satanic Temple's rituals adhere to our tenets, which value science and assert bodily autonomy. As an expression of our deeply held beliefs, the Satanic Temple has created a religious ritual that involves terminating an unwanted pregnancy during the first trimester. The religious abortion ritual involves the recitation of our third and fifth tenets, along with a personal affirmation during the abortion procedure. The ritual provides spiritual comfort and affirms bodily autonomy and self-worth. The Satanic Temple proudly announces to all of its followers that within the states that have enacted the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, religiously performed abortions are exempt from legal requirements that are not medically necessary. These include waiting periods, being forced to listen to the fetal heartbeat, forced burial or cremation of fetal remains, required reading materials, compulsory counseling, 
medically unnecessary sonograms and the requirement that practitioners withhold certain medical information. The Satanic Temple will do all it can to assure that states protect the religious rights of our members to attain first trimester abortions on demand. Thyself is thy master. Hail Satan. This is beyond darkness. I, I don't even have any words. I can't even break down the video. There's more to the video. You can watch it. There's like six extra minutes of Q&A on the official Satanic Temple uh, YouTube and website. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the good news. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The gospel is how people get saved, even murderers, even rapists, liars, pedophiles, you name it. The worst men on earth have hope if they will repent and believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that with all my heart. That being said, when explaining the gospel, Paul immediately launches into a two and a half chapter condemning all of humanity. And that's what a true Christian does. He exalts God's justice, he agrees with God's law, and in doing so, he condemns both himself and humanity. Apart from Christ, born-again believers, all our righteousness is filthy rags. And apart from Christ, non-born-again believers, uh, non-born-again non-believers, all your righteousness, filthy rags. We are nothing. Let me explain to you what mankind is. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Mankind is not ignorant of God's truth. Now, I know Jesus said, forgive them. They don't know what they do. You're blinded by sin, but you're not ignorant that there is a God who created us. You are accountable. You hold that truth down. You bury that truth under your sin. You don't want it to be true. You don't want to be accountable for your actions actions. It says that which is known about God is evident, clear within them, the law of God written in your heart, your conscience. God made it evident to them. It then goes on to say even outwardly in creation, in the creation of the world, in nature, in the ocean, in cliffs, in trees, in grass, in the universe, Mars, Saturn, stars, the sun, the moon, the creation reveals God's invisible attributes, namely these two, his eternal power. God always was, and that's how everything exists because he exists outside of it. Something has to be a first cause and his divine nature, his purity, his perfection, his power. He who can make the sun burn for these last few thousands of years must be incredibly powerful, have been clearly seen, and they are understood through what has been made. Creatures in our souls know there is a creator so that they are without excuse. There is no excuse on judgment day. It goes on to talk about men, even though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God and God giving them over to their passions. And it says, just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God, they didn't think about God any longer. Just like the schools, just like America, we push God out of society. God gave them over to a depraved mind. This satanic temple, this abortion ritual, LGBTQ movement, everything is proof of the wrath of God. It's not that the wrath of God is coming. It's already here. This is God's wrath. It's a de we've been given over. This is depravity. The people behind this are depraved. If America were to undergo a severe time of economic distress or civil war or world war where they had the ability to be violent, they would be viciously violent a depraved mind, to do those things which are not proper. It says, although they know the ordinance of God, it's within their conscience that those who practice such things are worthy of death. They, don't only, they not only do them, they give hearty approval, they celebrate, they rejoice to those who practice them. Romans chapter 3 is probably one of the best chapters to really understand what the gospel is. And it starts, I love this, what then, are we better than they? Not at all. We're, we've already charged. We're all under sin. I want you to understand this. If you're watching right now, you might hate me. There might be something acting up in you where you wish you could kill me. I get it. I know how I sound. Believe me, I wouldn't want to listen to me for an hour either, but I'm begging you to listen to me here. I am not better than you. Biblically, I am a murderer. I am not a good person. 
okay? But Christ had mercy on me. He gave me a new life. He's giving new life to millions of people across the planet right now. And he's offering you, he's calling you to repent of your lifestyle and turn away from sin through this good news that I am preaching, through the gospel. The gospel is that power of God. You might think you know it. You might think you've grown up in church your whole life and you know it. I promise you today, if you're thinking of having an abortion, if you're pro-abortion, you are not, you don't know it. You have no idea what you're talking about. You are not pro-abortion with a true understanding of the gospel. Okay, so let me explain it. Paul writes, as it is written, there is none righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There's no one who seeks for God. No one looks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become useless. This is so important. You need to understand this. You need to humble yourself. Apart from Christ, we are, that word means worthless. That's what we are. That's why I'm not here proclaiming my righteousness. I don't have 10 steps for you to become a more loving person and stop killing babies. I don't have three steps Robert did to improve your life. I don't have that. There's nothing good in me. I have the gospel. That's all I'm offering. I have Jesus. That's it. We are worthless apart from him. Not only is what we're doing worthless and we will find no true satisfaction in it, but on judgment day, any little mere passing pleasure of happiness you had will be infinitely paid back in eternities and eons of torment you cannot imagine. So we've become worthless. There is none who does good, not even one. It says their throat is an open grave. We belch out lies and deceit. With their tongues, they keep deceiving. It likens venom. The poison of asps, it says, snakes is under their lips. Their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. And look at this. Their feet are swift to shed blood. They love their sin. They love their murder. They hate God. They hate instruction. They cast off all restraint. It says destruction and misery are in their paths, and the paths of peace they have not known. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He'll show you into the way of peace. There is, and this is humanity's indictment. This is our problem. There is no fear of God before their eyes. They have no idea who God is. I promise you this. If you do not fear God, it is because you do not know God. If you do not fear God, you have no idea who the God of Scripture is. Now, we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law. That's your conscience. So that every mouth may be closed and all the world may become accountable to God. On judgment day, you will put your hand over your mouth. You will know you are wrong and you will know you continued and you would not listen to reason. It says, by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. I want to tell you today, you cannot be saved by simply not getting the abortion you're thinking of. You cannot be saved by simply stop going to the satanic temple. You cannot be saved by any good deed or any following of the law. You are damned by the law. You are, your heart is laid bare and you realize just like me, you are a sinner and you deserve God's wrath just like me. It says, through the law comes the knowledge of sin. The law is a tutor to bring you to Christ, to the Messiah. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Jesus was prophesied. Here's your science. Here's your reason. Reason with me, brothers. Uh, it's ludicrous not to believe the Bible. Jesus is the only expected person in human history. Go to my Old Testament prophecies of Christ playlist. Hundreds of things were written about him before he was born. The prophets witnessed him. And then there's been national prophecies about many different nations. Israel, the Greeks, Rome, the Assyrians, Egypt, the Amorites, every single prophecy in the Bible has come true, and they all point us towards the Messiah. And the Messiah is God in human flesh. Jesus of Nazareth, the biblical Jesus, is the Messiah. He's our only hope because we're guilty and we deserve hell. And the Bible says within God's very name, he will not acquit the guilty, but also within that name that he's gracious and merciful. So how does he do that? This is what he does. It says the righteousness of God is through faith in Jesus Christ. You have to have faith in Jesus. I'll explain why in a second. For all those who believe, for there's no distinction because we've all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. Now, when you hear that verse, I know you want to think, great, we've all sinned and God will forgive us all. But that's not true. Jesus said narrow is the road to life and few find it. And the road to life is simple. 
It is those who have been justified as a gift by his grace. We all deserve hell. We all have broken God's law. No one deserves heaven. And we all are under the righteous wrath of God. And and by God's mere grace and mercy alone, we've been justified. Christ entered his creation while we were enemies of God. And he, he could have came and judged us instantly, but he came and he served us. He lived a perfect life. And then he went to the cross and died an agonizing death for people who hated him. That includes me and you before Christ came into our life, if you're saved. And he died for people who hated him. And on the cross, God poured out the wrath of every sin of every person who would ever believe on his own son so that we could be justified as a gift by the grace of God through the redemption, the purchasing back. Jesus literally purchased us with his own blood. It says God displayed publicly. Jesus has publicly been displayed. He's the most famous person in all of human history, no matter what you believe in him, as a propitiation. That is a sacrifice in his blood that satisfies the wrath of God. It is as if on the cross, the flood and torrent of the wrath of God that me and you could not even imagine paying in all of hell for all eternity, it's exhausted and quenched in the body of Jesus Christ through faith. If you want to know if you're born again, if you want to know if you're chosen from before the foundation, if you want to know if you're going to get to heaven, make sure you have faith in Christ because God gives us this gift by the gift of faith. The faith I have in Jesus is not of my own will. No, it was a gift from God. And God did that to demonstrate his righteousness because in the forbearance, the merciful patience and pity of God He passed over the sins previously committed for the demonstration of his righteousness, not our own at the present time, so that he would be, this is so key, just. He will punish every sin. He will not acquit the guilty, but he's also the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. You can pay for your sins for all eternity or turn to Christ and he will pay them for you. Where then is boasting? Who can be proud of this? Nobody. It's excluded by the law of works, no, but by a law of faith. I desperately want you to understand and believe this gospel, but I need to warn you, if you don't, you still have no authority in your life. You think you do, but you're a slave. God says to Moses, I'll have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I'll have compassion on whom I have compassion. God is absolutely sovereign over everyone who believes or disbelieves his own good news. So it does not depend on the man who wills or the man who runs, but on God who has mercy. If you reject this message, I want you to understand you still have no authority over your life. Your will is nothing. Do not be deceived, the Bible says. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he will also reap. These four words should terrify you, but they don't, because if you're not in Christ, there is no fear of God. God is not mocked. Let me, let me explain this. Everything will glorify God in the end. Heaven will glorify God's grace and mercy, and hell will glorify his holiness and justice and wrath. It says, For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. God is not mocked. Man is mocked. You're making yourself a mockery. You're fashioning yourself into a vessel of wrath. Paul talked about this in Romans 9. He says, What if God, willing to demonstrate his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction? Do you understand how terrifying that is? God is omniscient. He knows everything and he has always known everything. He has never learned anything. He has known exactly who will be in heaven and exactly who will be in hell from the beginning. It says God has chosen us in Christ before the foundation of the earth. The book of life is the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. God is eternal and outside his creation. He's not learning anything. He's not changing his plan as he goes. That should terrify you because if you are not in Christ and you are a mocker and you are a scoffer, you have great evidence to believe right now your fashioning yourself into a vessel of wrath for God to demonstrate his holy hatred of wrath for all eternity. And he also does that to make known the riches of his glory upon the vessels of mercy, which he prepared beforehand for glory. 
You see, I'm no better than a vessel of wrath. I'm no better than the people that end up in hell, but God had mercy on me and I want him to have mercy on you too. But you have to understand the great danger you're in. You have to have sorrow over your sin. The Bible says the Holy Spirit convicts of sin and righteousness and judgment. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You have no free will. You have no authority. And I know that angers you, but it's true. Your bad decisions are all under the sovereignty of God. You are powerless before this God. God says, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. And there is no one who can save from my hand. Psalm 76 says, the wrath of man will praise you. The wrath of man will praise God. Where does that happen? Hell. With a remnant of wrath, you will gird yourself. God will clothe himself with the wrath of man. Jesus said he will separate all of mankind in between sheep, his children, who hear his voice, who don't follow strangers, on the left and on the right goats, and he'll tell the goats, depart from me. The satanic temple uses a goat as its symbol, depart from me, cursed ones, cursed ones. The curse in the garden was the wrath of God, and this is its punishment into the eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. The devil is heading there. He has no offer of redemption. The angels fell and God was, God is so holy that a single sin of the devil and his angels, and he's holy and righteous and just enough that he casts them down forever. But he's provided a way out for mankind. He sent his son here to die for us. Let me explain to you a little bit about what will happen when you get to hell if you do not turn to Christ. Jesus told a story about a rich man and Lazarus, and the rich man is crying out. He cries out in hell. He says, Father Abraham, he's looking up at Lazarus and Abraham, the father of faith. Immediately, he says, have mercy on me and send me Lazarus so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue, for I am in agony in this flame. I want to explain to you your attitude the second that your flesh hits that fire, and it should terrify you no matter how satanic you've been. No matter how big into the LGBTQ movement or satanic movement you are, no matter how anti-Christ you are, the second your flesh hits the scolding hot fire of God, you will be an evangelist. It's true. You won't ever go to heaven for it. You won't ever be rewarded for it. But you will have the perfect attitude of an evangelist. Look at this. He cries out. He says, I have five brothers. Please go warn them so that they will not also come to the place of this torment you see, that's all the thing. He was so terrified for his family. He didn't care about his pride. He didn't care about any of that anymore. There was no hope for him. This man is not a good man, but that's how hot the fire would be. That should terrify you. You have to forsake your self-will, forsake your authority, forsake the devil, forsake sin, and turn to Jesus and be saved. The Bible says, as many as received him, as received Jesus, to them he, be- he gave the right to become children of God. Right now, you're a child of wrath, and the wrath of God abides on you. Become a child of God by receiving Jesus. It says, even to those who believe in his name, trust Jesus alone for salvation. Forsake all righteousness. Forsake all good deeds. Forsake your sin, and then you will be born. The Bible says you'll be born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man but of God. I want you to see how important this is. In your affirmation statement, I'm going to bring you back there. This is so important. Bear with me. In your affirmation statement, as you kill your your child, you say, by my body, by my blood, by my will, it is done. I want you to be born again by the opposite. Born again, not of your body, not of your flesh, not of the will of your flesh, not of your blood, not, not of that, nor of your will. I want you to be born of God.